All right, man. How uh, how have you been throughout the the pandemic, and how how have things uh, how are things there in Ontario? Uh, so I've been pretty good. I mean, I've still been able to uh, you know stay in shape for the most part. Um, you know, still got my runs in and stuff, and um, you know, do a lot of bag work and stuff like that. So um, yeah, so I've stayed in pretty good shape. Um, as far as Ontario, um, my hometown Huntsville, they're starting to open up pretty good now. Um, but where I'm staying in Hamilton, because it's pretty close to Toronto, we're uh, about a week or two behind um, everywhere else in Ontario. But yeah, it seems like we're we're moving towards uh, opening up soon. So even though that we were uh, living through a pandemic, you went ahead and accepted a fight. Obviously, things fell through, uh, some visa issues, which I'm sure we'll touch on in a little bit. But describe um, the decision behind accepting a fight. Obviously, your training probably wasn't ideal and whatnot. Was part of it knowing that, you know what, my training isn't ideal, but neither is his? Or what sort of things uh, went behind that decision? Um, it was mainly just I haven't, haven't been able to get a fight. So, uh, you know, I kind of jumped on the first opportunity uh, that came up. Um, you know, taking fights on short notice obviously uh, suck because you can't get a full training camp. Um, it's hard. I took it on about two weeks, so it's hard to kind of, um, you know, get everything dialed in and get the weight right and stuff. But, um, you know, I didn't want to want to turn down, you know, a fight because uh, it's been almost a year since I fought. So, we jumped on it and, uh, you know, worked really hard and, you know, um, invested in, in the two week training camp. I was able to get my weight down and, you know, everything was looking great. And, uh, yeah, then, um, I think it was the Monday before the fight. Um, they let me know that, uh, they weren't able to get a visa for me and that the fight was off. And then we kind of asked, um, you know, when, when I'd be looking at getting another fight, then they said, they don't know. So right now we're just, uh, just trying to stay in shape and, and wait, I guess. So describe kind of like the roller coaster of emotions. I mean, you've got enough on your plate. You know, you've got this pandemic. You're trying to make weight. You've got a fight you're preparing for. And then on top of this, something out of your control ends up kind of snatching that away from you. So describe that sort of emotion. Like, is it like, you know, heartbreaking? What, what's that sort of feeling like? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, it was pretty difficult. Um, I mean, we've been trying to get a fight for, for a long time. I came out of that fight in September. Uh, against Polo Reyes, I was in good shape. I uh, didn't take any damage in the fight, so I was ready to go, uh, you know, right after that. So, uh, you know, and I, I like to try and stay busy and get as many fights as I can. And, uh, you know, nothing really came up. And then finally something short notice. And, um, you know, whenever you get a short notice fight, you're always like, oh, shoot, can I make weight, this or that? And, uh, you know, it's always a little, little more stressful. But, um, you know, I was I was excited to get a fight, so we jumped on it. And then, yeah, for everything kind of went perfect. I thought it was a perfect opponent for me in uh, Sean Woodson. He had a lot of hype. He was undefeated. Um, And I knew for sure, you know, I was going to walk in there and, uh, you know, I was going to finish him for sure, but uh, I was going to try and knock him out. And, uh, you know, I think I would have got that performance bonus and I would have stole all the hype from Woodson and, you know, everything would have been, you know, happily ever after. But um, yeah, unfortunately they said they couldn't get the visa. And then, uh, yeah, then it was like all that training, you know, everything, everything I was working towards kind of fell through and then not knowing when I would get another opportunity to fight um, also was, um, you know, pretty devastating. If they just said, oh, you know, we'll get you a fight in a month or something, then, you know, then I would have stayed, stayed in the training camp and stuff and, um, you know, would have had something to look forward to. But right now uh, with no fights and, and, you know, not really anything in the, in the near future, it's uh, hard to stay motivated. Is it a bit bittersweet knowing he lost? Like, I, I know I'm sure you don't root against or for anybody that's uh, that I guess isn't part of your team and whatnot, but is it a bit bittersweet knowing, you know what, like that could have been me picking up that W? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and I, I think it went um, exactly how I, I, I thought it would for me. I, I think I would have finished in the first round, but I think we saw a lot of holes in his game. Um, you know, a, a lot of the stuff that I'm good at and the stuff that I was working uh, for that fight worked well against in that fight. And I think with my power and stuff, uh, you know, it would have worked even better and, and I would have been able to finish them. And, um, yeah, I know, um, um, the guy that beat him got the bonus and everything. So, uh, I think Julian, Julian Rossi got the bonus, uh, performance bonus. So, uh, yeah, I think, um, I would have been able to go in and do the, do the same thing. So, um, I mean, I'm happy for Julian. I know him from, from training with him in, in Vegas. So if it had to be somebody, uh, to, to take my spot, I'm glad it was him, but, um, you know, I, it's really, um, 
really felt like it was my moment. So you're now three fights into your UFC career. How good did it feel to pick up that first W last time out against Polo? Uh, it felt amazing. Um, you know, it's hard to uh, call yourself a UFC fighter until you've won a fight in the UFC. Um, you know, I think I, I was able to showcase some of my skills and stuff. Um, my first two fights, my first fight was on short notice. And, you know, for the first kind of round there, first half of round, um, you know, I felt like I was I was doing what, I, what I'm capable of and then just wasn't able to maintain that pace, uh, I think, with the adrenaline dump and stuff. And then my second fight uh, against Matt Sales, I, f- I thought I was in great shape. Um, we changed everything for the training camp. Um, and, you know, I looked in, in great shape, but um, I just didn't just didn't perform well. Um, you know, I had my moments. I was able to take his back and take him down and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I think um, this third the third fight, I was able to kind of get my mind right and, um, you know, stick to the game plan. And, and I think that's kind of more what we're going to see from me in the future. Um, and really what I should have done in my, my first two fights. But, um, you know, we got it all figured out and dialed in now, and, and moving forward, we're going to uh, keep finishing opponents. So talking about the future, what is next? What, what sort of timeline are you looking for? I mean, obviously you were ready to go a little while ago. Um, like you said, you're staying in shape. If, if the call were to come, are you good to go? And is there a, a, an opponent in mind or, or a location? Obviously, you were just in Fight Island, so I'm sure that would have been a, – a hell of an opportunity there if you got a short notice call but is there a is there a location preference is there an opponent preference or are you just good to go whenever uh just good to go whenever i mean i've been you know good to go for a while now um and i you know i prefer vegas i think just because the time change and stuff like that but um you know fight island works too um you know i'd love to you know finish uh you know settle our, settle my business with uh, sean woodson um I don't know how he's doing right now, if he's got a suspension or he's a little beat up still. Uh, but, I mean, Alex Caceres, too, I think would be a great fight. Uh, a lot of people have, have mentioned him. And, uh, you know, he's been in the UFC for a long time. I think he's a, he's a good matchup for me. I think he'd make an exciting fight. So, uh, you know, he's another guy on my radar. And then, obviously, Matt Sales. I'd love to avenge that loss one day. Um, you know, I'm sure I need to get a couple wins under my belt before I can go asking too much from the UFC. But, uh, yeah, I mean, really, really anything as soon as possible. Yeah, I like those matchups. I, I mean, I was thinking, you know, Julian Arosa because he got that win. But but like you said, you guys train. And so I'm sure you know him pretty well. So I don't know if that would work out. I think Alex Caceres is booked. But I like all those matchups, man. I think they're I think they're great. Um, so turnaround time. Does, does it next weekend good? Like it, what, what sort of turnaround do you need? Is it several weeks? Is it is it just a few days? What, what sort of turnaround are you, would you like? Uh, I mean, right now, um since it sounds like everything's kind of booked up, I mean, I wouldn't mind, you know, a month uh, or a month and a half to get ready. Um, but I think, I mean, 145, as long as I've got like two weeks notice, I can make it. Um, anything less than two weeks, you know, I'll jump on a, on a 155 fight, but uh, just not sure if it's if it's healthy for me to uh, to try and make 145 on less than two weeks. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm willing to go up to, to 155 again on, on short notice. Um, yeah. So there was a yeah, there's a lot of hype uh, about uh, Abu Dhabi and and Fight Island. As someone who's been there and experienced it, did it live up to the hype? Oh, I mean, it was super interesting. Uh, you know, it's just I mean, still with the with the pandemic going on and everything, everything so restricted and, and kind of shut down. Um, you know, we had uh, had Fight Island, but it was you know it was it was pretty empty. So it was just us fighters and the people working at the hotel. So um, there wasn't a whole lot to do. You kind of go to the beach or you could hang out at the hotel. So um, it was cool. And like we were in quarantine for the first two days and we got out, kind of roamed around the island for a day or two. And then, um, you know, then it was, you know, got a little boring. But um, I mean, we're not there to have fun, right? We're there to, uh, I was there to help corner my, my training partner. So, uh, I mean, that's where all our focus went anyways. Yeah, that fight didn't go uh, didn't go her way. But um, one of the things I've been wondering was, what was it like in the corner? I mean, I'm sure that empty arena probably felt really unusual from a from a, a corner's perspective. I mean, you can give advice throughout the entire fight, whereas, you know, if there's a full arena, it's kind of hard for them to hear you. But what was that? What was that like? Yeah, yeah, it was definitely interesting. You know, walking out to uh, to no crowd and everything, um, and then yeah, being able to uh, you know to hear so well and 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 to be able to, to speak and know that they can hear you, um, you know, it was, it was interesting. I, I enjoyed it. Um, 
I think I would still prefer the fans. Maybe I prefer the fans for when I fight. When I'm cornering, it's it's almost easier uh, when there is no fans. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a super interesting thing, and I mean, it looks like that's what we're going to be doing uh, for the near future, anyways, until stuff uh, opens up. So uh, yeah. So are you are you looking forward to, to to having that experience fighting in an empty arena? And, and do you think it? I find a lot of fighters it would benefit their performance. A fighter who's you know uh, like feeds off the crowd would almost benefit not having a crowd there. Uh, as for you, do you think that's something that you know may hinder you, uh, may benefit you? You saw it with Anthony Smith, where I think you know he was listening to his corner t- almost too much, where he gassed out. Um, for you, have you experienced anything like that? And, and what do you think it would be like being the person inside the octagon? Um, yeah, so I, I don't think it would affect me at all. I, I think there is some people that feed off the crowd in a positive way and feed off the crowd in a negative way. Um, so I don't, I enjoy the crowd, especially when, you know, I, I enjoy the, the hostile crowd and I enjoy the, you know, the, the friendly fan crowd. So when I'm in Canada and they're cheering for me. It's awesome. feels great. And when, uh, you know, I'm down in Mexico or something and they're cheering against me, uh, it also fuels me a little bit. But for the most part, um, you know, I'm there to do my job and I stay focused on on myself and doing what I'm supposed to do. So I don't let um, too much outside influence uh, really affect me. Um, And then, yeah, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, being able to hear my corner better um, will be uh, it'd be um, interesting. I mean, I usually hear them anyways. I can pick them out of the crowd and then, um, you know they give me advice as i'm fighting but it's not always i mean i'm the one in the ring so sometimes you kind of take that advice sometimes you leave it you know it's um you still got to uh, you can't kind of listen to everything they say um i think kind of like anthony smith did and then he kind of went um you know above and beyond and burned himself out and sometimes when you're in there and you're feeling your opponent you know in your head what ideas are going to kind of work what was the uh, the health and safety like there? I mean, I'm sure we, we hear it all the time. I mean, Dana White's been getting test after test after test. As someone who's been there, experienced it, was it really above and beyond? And they went like, what was it like being someone who who went through that? And secondly, did you get the nose test or the throat one? Uh, yeah. So I mean, the the health and safety stuff was um, you know it was as good as I could imagine. I couldn't imagine you know anything else. I can't imagine anything above and beyond. I think they did everything possible uh for the health and safety so um you know we flew from from toronto down to vegas uh did a test as soon as we got there then we were quarantined for 24 hours then we got on um you know like a a bus with just the other fighters that were that were um quarantined and tested went to the the airport where we went into like our own private turn terminal onto our chartered flight with everyone that's been tested um, and then once I was in Abu Dhabi, I was tested another four times. And then, um, you know, they sanitized and sterilized everybody and everything as they went into the hotel. Um, and then everybody's always wearing masks. Everyone at the hotel had the full like white suit and stuff on and masks and um, some had shields on and stuff. So it was uh, it couldn't get um, much better, I don't think, uh, health and safety wise. Um, and then, yeah, for the test, we got the option whether to do uh, in the nose or in the mouth. So uh, I did uh, in the mouth for all of them. Uh, I thought about trying the nose at the end for the last one, but uh, yeah, I was I was pretty comfortable and used to the mouth one, so I just stuck with it. I did uh, I did the nose one pretty early on. I got tested, and uh, that was back when they would like shove it all the way up there. Uh, definitely don't want to do that again. So I mean, Fight Island would have been incredible, but definitely don't want to do five or six tests. Um, I can't have a Canadian on without asking George St. Pierre getting inducted in the UFC Hall of Fame. I thought it was long overdue. I didn't even, I assumed he was already in there. Um, have you ever had the chance to to meet George or train with George? And and, and what's your opinion on, on George's GOAT status? Uh, yeah, so I've been to a TriStar, uh, I think, three times. And uh, yeah, I got to train with him every time I was there, you know, do some wrestling, some sparring and stuff. And and, you know, he's um, he's the same person uh, in real life as he is on TV. Super friendly. Um, you know, he always as soon as he shows up, he comes over and says hi and shakes my hand and stuff. So, uh, yeah, super nice guy. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think he's he's the best of all time, really. Um, you know, he has he has two losses, but he avenged them both. Um, you know, I think um, with uh, somebody like John Jones, 
We've got the whole, um, you know, the steroids and stuff that, that were proven and then some other stuff, a lot of stuff he's got going on. But really, it's, I think it's the steroids that kind of, you know, put an, an asterisk on his career there because um, we don't know how long he was doing them. We just know that he was caught. So it, it's really hard to, um, you know, um, really be super legitimate about, about all his wins if he was on steroids. Um, but yeah, and then the other one, Sanderson Silva, who's also been been uh, caught with tainted supplements and stuff, and and obviously he's got um, you know, he, maybe he fought a little beyond his prime, and he's he's got a lot of losses now. Whereas I think George kind of retired at the same at the right time. Um, I think if he did come back now, I still think he'd be a, a super competitive um, in the 170 pound division, or if he could make the the 155 pound division. Um, I know he did a practice cut there a few years back and stuff, and. And sounded like he was going to come out to fight Khabib at 155 if they could make it happen. But then, uh, you know, I guess it kind of fell through. But, you know, George is always in shape. And, uh, you know, maybe he's, he'd still be um, interested. As for Canadian MMA as a whole, I mean, really, Carlos Newton, George St. Pierre, Rory McDonald, and recently, I um, forget her name, the girl that fought Amanda Newton, Felicia Spencer. There haven't really been a whole lot of Canadians who have fought for a belt TJ Grant was supposed to as well, Halifax boy, so I had to had to slide TJ in there as well. Um, it must be nice seeing new Canadian faces come in. I mean, Anthony Romero getting into the Contender Series, and uh, I think KB Bular as well just got in yesterday, just announced. What do you think it will really take before you see like an influx of Canadian talent, like you see with Brazil, Russia, and the United States? Um. Yeah, so I think the, the problem with... Um... Canadian MMA is, is still pretty small. I mean, especially here in Ontario, um, you know, we don't really have a lot of shows. There's, there's kind of one show that goes every now and then. Um, so there isn't a whole lot of opportunity um, for guys to get experience. Um, and as far as amateur MMA, I think it's still illegal here. It's super, super weird. So it's really tricky to do here. So it's, it's kind of just with the regulations and stuff, it's kind of smothered, um, smothered. Canadian MMA, at least here in Ontario. So um, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to get guys interested in it. And then obviously there's no, there's no money in it. So uh, anybody that's athletic or, or, you know, skilled in sports and stuff, you know, if they, they're going to go with hockey or they're going to pick something else, you know, with the possibility of, of making a little more money as opposed to, you know, MMA where, you know, your only hope is to kind of make it to the UFC if you want to make any money at all. But the whole time, you know, you're going to have to, you know, fight in, in local shows around Ontario or Canada. Super hard to get fights once you get a couple wins and it's hard to get opponents. And um, and then you don't make any money anyway. So it's just a difficult, difficult sport to uh, to pursue here in Canada. Whereas I think maybe in um, in Brazil, maybe it's it's a little bit different. Obviously, they're they're a little deeper rooted in martial arts. They have a lot more. Um, you know, jujitsu tournaments, and there's a lot more going on with it. And they've had Valley Tudo way back when, so I think it's just um, the competition. There's a lot more of it, so it's able to build a lot better fighters and stuff like that. And then with uh, you know, like Russian stuff, they've got Sambo, and they've they've got um, you know, I think they have a lot more people in like Russian Parliament. Obviously, I think Vladimir Putin is a, is a big MMA fan, so. It's just different here in here in Canada. It's there's just not the same kind of support system, um, and like wrestling in high school. I mean, I up in Huntsville, we didn't have wrestling, um, you know, so it's very very difficult to to get into uh, the sport. Last question for you. I'm a big Leafs fan. Uh, I'm I love that the the NHL is going ahead and putting some uh, hockey games on. I'm sure you you love it too. What team do you support? Uh, I guess I go with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, yeah, I don't watch a whole lot, but obviously being, uh, you know, from Ontario, um, I have to support the, the Maple Leafs and, you know, I feel like they're kind of, kind of Canada's team, you know, they're, you know, they're the big, the big one. I mean, they haven't won, won the Stanley Cup in a little bit, but you never know, maybe they'll come back. Still, yeah, I'm still passionate. I, I mean, I, I was born in 95, so I think they, it was 30 years before I was born the last time they won a cup. But uh, I'm still here. I'm still rooting for them. And hopefully before I pass, they, they, they might win one. Uh, this might be the year. There you go. All right, man. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to me. All the best. Hopefully you get a, a, fight, a fight announcement here soon. And I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me on. All right, man. Uh, stay safe. Keep washing your hands. Um, don't want to catch anything because, man, everything's spreading like crazy right now. Yeah. All right, man. All the best.
All right, we'll talk to you later.